So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and you can find all the work that I do on my website on www.robinnorgren.com. Right now, we're in the middle of a series on musings from a modern-day monk. His name is Jeremy Driscoll, and he wrote a book a few years back called The Monk's Alphabet. And I find uh, many of the essays that I found within the book to be quite timely and thought-provoking, especially in our time today. So I hope you enjoy them. B is for Bible. Why does a person write? To find a thought. To give form and body to an intuition. To find what it is that makes an idea hold together. Great authors keep repeating themselves. Something profound lies in this. They are working through a few big thoughts and intuitions. These come from the heart. They rise up. And one tries to sound the music in a thousand different ways. It is a thought, a set of thoughts, or one complex thought that has lived throughout many years. The Bible shares in this mystery of writing... It has many human authors, but also one big book by one same divine author who is working out complex thought, one complex thought. Or it is a whole library of books by this author, employing many literary genres. But what is this writing? It can be pondered from different points of view. They are all placed within a narrative form in the beginning. These are the very first words of the very first page. But that structure holds all the way through to the last pages of Revelation. Covenant is perhaps the single most unitary theme of this divine author. Very interesting also is the idea of intervention. God's great, surprising, unexpected interventions in human history. God is the one who intervenes in history from above. In any case, the image of God is continually refined throughout the course of this book, slowly molding historical figures to form one complex figure, a new Moses, a new David with a new covenant, the awaited Messiah. It is overloaded writing. There are many meanings, many interpretations. In a sense, they are all literal meanings because they are part of what the Bible has come to mean. The Bible is like a church, centuries old, that has seen restorations in many styles. For example, Baroque, inside Romanesque. And then it is restored to a supposed original, which never in fact really existed. This this supposed original is the way that hardcore, historical, critical exegesis tries to read the Bible sometimes. But all the periods, all the interpretations have a kind of truth, especially all of them together. Yet ultimately, we are not talking about the Bible until we have faced the strangeness of the Christian Bible and its central message, resurrection. This is something utterly unique, even if we have become too used to hearing it. 
but it is an extraordinary claim. The survival of each individual historical existence. If this is so, everything is new. History, as we would otherwise conceive it, is over. A new time opens. It is a definitive passage. B is for black hole. We are just a few hours away from evening prayer on Christmas Eve. And with our singing, we will begin the feast. The day is crisp, cold, and blue. Beautiful. There is a lovely slanted light from the feeble sun. I feel quite empty, and I am not expecting to feel otherwise. Yet I hope this might be my learning a new kind of hope. Hope that is deeper in and less like joys that are too bluntly material. But I do not know. It may just be a great emptiness. The visual image is that of having a black hole in the middle of me. In my stomach or in the place where my stomach is meant to be. All of it, all around it, the rest of my body and even my person continue to function. I have thoughts. I say and do the right things. I feel the feelings that people feel. I even help people and encourage them. But all of this circles around a darkness in the middle of me. When I ask myself, what is it? What does the darkness mean? I move between two poles as I grope toward an answer. One pole says that this is evil and all of its awesome power to devour and destroy me, to destroy us all. The other pole says that it's the luminous darkness of the mystery of God. Or to combine the poles in the terms of the Christian feast or the Christmas feast, it is God's light come cloaked in the garment of flesh and the garment of sin. With this hole in the middle of me, I will celebrate the liturgy and participate in all the festive gatherings. Lord, show me the way I should go and save me from crumbling. The words of John's prologue describe my hope. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. B is for Black Stars. Paul Murray's book, These Black Stars, arrived in the mail the other day, and I am enjoying reading again on the handsome printed page all the poems I've read before in the manuscript, many of which I read and discussed with him. As I finished it a first time and read the last poem called Beginning, I wondered if I would ever write a poem with such sentiments. I would like to. I am just wondering if it can ever happen for me. He begins, Now, after a long night of stillness and longing. This is the night in which I still find myself, and being in the midst of it, I wonder if I will ever be able to speak of an after to such a night. A few lines later, he says, and what I have despaired of so long is here. I am still despairing, and I see no after. Ah, well, as so many of his poems suggest, if something changes for me, it will not be my own doing, but a grace received. I am waiting. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure to share this with a friend you think might be encouraged by it. And check out my website. I actually have a couple of classes that teach you how to to look at poetry and how to write your own poetry in ways that you don't have to feel overwhelmed or um, just have no sense of how to begin. Well, 
It's a, it's a poetry class for beginners. So I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for stopping by.